Welcome to ClueCon Weekly. Join us every Wednesday to learn about the latest cutting edge developments in the real time communications industry. ClueCon Weekly is brought to you by Free Switch Solutions. This isn't Get right. Get support and professional services directly from the creators of the Free Switch open source project, solving your issues in the most efficient, stable, and scalable way possible. Get the Free Switch advantage. Visit freeswitch.com. Also brought to you by ClueCon, the premier technology conference for developers by developers. Join us every summer in Chicago. ClueCon kicks off on Monday with our annual hackathon, The Coder Games, followed by three days of technology-rich presentations discussing telecom, WebRTC, and IoT from developers around the world. To learn more, visit ClueCon.com or call 877-74-A-CLUE. And welcome to ClickCon Weekly. Today is the 20th of March, 2019. This week, Alessandro uh, <coughs> from Italy will be joining us. He's going to be talking about some WebRTC stuff uh, and, uh, and SIPML5 and some other things. Uh, he's got a really cool project he's going to be showing us. Uh, so stand by for that. Before we go there, let's go see uh, Miss Abby for the news. Abby, how are you doing today? I am doing wonderful today. Thank you for asking. Hi, everybody. And as always, thank you for joining us today on KluCon Weekly. Uh, the biggest piece of news that we have is that the call for speakers for KluCon 2019 is open, and that closes on April 15th. So time's a ticking. So don't forget, that's going to come up a lot quicker than you think. You can submit at our website. There is on the homepage a really easy little button that says, Submit your speaker proposals. It'll ask you a few questions and then you're all done. So it's super painless. And if you have a project that you're working on or something you'd like to present on, ClueCon is a great opportunity to do that. So I highly recommend that you do that. Of course, if you don't want to speak, you can still register. Registration is open for a long time, but uh, I definitely recommend doing that as soon as possible. We have our lowest prices that we've had right now in a decade in honor of our 15th anniversary. And then we have two new tickets that we've never offered before. We have our Coder Games only ticket. So if you want to show up to ClueCon only on Monday and no other day, now you can do that just to participate in the hackathon. And then we also have a family ticket if they are interested in eating at the lunches and going to all the parties that we throw. So those are two new tickets that we've never offered before. Uh, a quick shout out to our sponsor, SignalWire. They are offering $50 in credit if you use the code CCWeekly19. That's all caps, CC Weekly 19. Uh, and you can sign up for a space at signalwire.com. Uh, today is the very last day of Enterprise Connect, and some of our team is there. Uh, Sharon, Anthony, Jill, and Brian, I do believe, are there. So if you are in Orlando right now at Enterprise Connect, I would definitely go find them and say hi. If you don't know where we are, just DM us on Instagram and we'll tell you. Uh, speaking of Brian West, he is actually going to be a guest on ClueCon Weekly on April 10th. So mark your calendars for that. And he's going to be talking a little bit about uh, some free switch news and what free switch can do for you and things like that and what he's been up to. And as always, if you have any questions during this call, please comment them in the YouTube uh, uh, Slack channel, IRC channel, and we will try to answer them live during this call. So that is all the announcements I have for today. So back to you, Ken. All right. Thank you, Miss Abby. Let's jump over to uh, Mr. Mike uh, for Community Corner. Happy Wednesday. Hello. Um, so today we have a question for Mike Jarris. And the question was posted on the Free Switch users mailing list. It's about video banners, right? So the question is, hi, I am trying to set the video banner from the admin control of Virto client as well as the FSTLI using conference name video banner uh, member ID text. I see a dark blue banner showing up on the bottom of the member for whom I am setting the banner, but the text I am providing does not show up. I tried to tweak the config files as per the mod conference page, but no impact. Please let me know if I need to add any configuration to see the banner properly. So oh, I guess hey. the real question, 
how do we do video batters? How do we do video batters? So there's two different things. Uh, the, the, the thing right there on the screen is not a video banner. That is a logo image with text rendered on top of it. But uh, there's also this thing called video banner, which is kind of a lower tech version of uh, the same thing. Both of them use uh, a library uh, to take a true type font file and render that text. Um, I think what this guy's problem is, is that the fonts aren't there. Also possibly the library wasn't there when he built it. Uh, if you use our packages, all of those things should work properly. So uh, just to avoid weird problems uh, with how to actually deploy things, I always recommend using our packages for uh, deployments. But it, it, my guess is either it wasn't built against the, the true type font rendering library, whose name I can't recall, or that the fonts aren't installed. Um, but uh, while I can here, I can show you what a banner would look like. This is a test. So that, that's the banner that he was talking about, um, and that is set directly from uh, the Virto Communicator admin panel can also be done with an API command. Um, th this thing here is a logo image, um, and essentially it's a, a PNG uh, with transparency, like a PNG A uh, uh, image file um that's set in that position and then you can actually put attributes when you specify that image to set um the text size and position and all those things so um you you can do custom ones beforehand or you can generate ones kind of on the fly like we're doing here um and uh they tend to look a lot better than those other banners which are you know literally a bar that you set uh yeah. So this is this here is the PNG, and then the that text is, is on top. That is, yeah, that is the PNG, and then this is a regular banner. Is what uh, I spelled it right and everything. Uh, is is what those look like? Like I said, you got a couple options to tweak them. Oh, yeah. You you can uh, tweak um, some things with the size and. Uh, you can also specify the font and things like that. But uh, I, I generally recommend, if, if you're going to try to do a, a more professional look, um, look, look at the features for the PNG banner. Um, they're, they're pretty popular, maybe not awesomely documented, but uh, I think most of that stuff is out there in one place or another. And it does look really cool. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and this feeds off of the name and email address that's fed in um, when I log into the Riddle Communicator. That data is sent back down, and we use it in the dial plan to set everything up for uh, these to display right. Well, thank you, Mike. Answers from the experts. No problem. And back to you, Ken. All right, let's just jump over to Miss Abby for blog spy. All right, hi guys. So today for the blog spot, I'm going to be talking a little bit about something that we highlighted in the newsletter yesterday, which is taking your free switch deployment to the next level. And if you are not subscribed to our newsletter, there is a link on our Facebook page if you're interested in subscribing. We send news every Tuesday all about free switch and ClueCon so you never miss out. But on to the blog spot. So the free switch open source project has been running for 15 years now. And part of our expertise is actually offering a variety of services that we know our customers need. And while countless developers love to play with our software and have become experts themselves, others simply just don't have the time to explore our code like they really, really need to. And they do require some extra assistance. And uh, many professionals also need consistently updated code in order to keep their businesses ahead of the curve. And we completely understand these necessities. And for those people, we offer professional services for businesses of all sizes, from single developers to larger corporations. 
So the founders of the Free Switch Open Source Project have been offering professional services since 2008, actually, and they can help you take your Free Switch deployment to the next level with our SignalWire Stack subscription offering. And that is the name for our Free Switch professional services. So this commercial subscription designed for professional developers offers early access to newest code bases, uh, to the newest code base and features, as well as priority bug fixes. And if you have any problems, a team of FreeSwitch developers are available to help you resolve your issues quickly. Uh, FreeSwitch professional services also provides support for your specific deployment needs so that you can spend more time focused on your business. Uh, we help your team assemble communications, building blocks necessary to uh, create the product or offering that you desire, and our developer resources will interface with your team and guide you through the process in order to accomplish specific tasks that relate to your communications project specifically. So SignalWire Stack is actually the only commercially supported version of the world's most powerful and widely deployed open source communications platform brought to you directly from the experts, the creators of the FreeSwitch open source project. So that's a little bit about that. Um, I know not everybody may be aware there's some changes going on. So that's just a little bit of a highlight of some of the things that we offer, especially if you are a FreeSwitch user or use FreeSwitch uh, to help grow your business. So to learn about how to get the latest features and updates, you can contact services at freeswitch.com to learn more about our professional subscription to the FreeSwitch base, or you can visit our website at freeswitch.com. There's a little bit more information there. So again, you can contact us at services at freeswitch.com. And again, Brian West is going to be here on ClueCon Weekly on April 10th to talk about more, more about the free switch news and more about other things that we can offer. So if you have any specific questions that you would like to ask him, that is a great time. Otherwise, you can contact us at services at freeswitch.com and we can help you set that up. So that's all I have for today. Again, please subscribe to our newsletter and back to you guys. All right, let's jump over and let's get uh, everybody going. How's it going today, guys? Mike? Hi. Hi, Michael. Good to see you. How are you? Welcome, Alessandro. It's good to have you here today. OK. First of all, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here with you and all attendees. And uh, I'm happy to be, to be able to speak something about communication technologies. and. Uh, uh, what else? I hope that uh, will be an interesting journey. So I can start uh, speaking about uh, something that uh, nowadays the, the interest expressed in what communication field is incredibly increasing every day for many, many different uh, reasons. And uh, probably the most interesting one uh, for me uh, today is, uh, I think, is the expansion of WebRTC technologies. Um, I attended the Astricon conference last August 2018 in Orlando, and uh, it was my first time at the Astricon and the first time to speak uh, at a very important uh, conference as Astricon is. And I had the chance to meet uh, um, and speak with many smart people from all over the world and that have uh, a lot, uh, a lot of knowledge. On telecom, yeah. And so attending this kind of events uh, always remind me how huge is the communication field and how many technologies exist from uh, Asterisk to also free, free switch, Camellio, OpenSips, and so on. So today I'm very interested in WebRTC and uh, I saw different talks and I spoke about it and uh, to share my knowledge. And this is the, the reason about this ClueCon Weekly web show, I think, that is uh, to share my experiences with uh, all the people and that ideas. So today I'm going to speak about uh, how whole web developers can add audio and video codes to their web applications, because this feature today is very crucial, I think, to all environments from remote support, uh, but uh, also to easily chat with uh, everyone everywhere. Uh, so um, I can say something about myself, okay? My name is Alessandro Polidori and I'm a senior software engineer. 
especially focused on uh, web technologies and uh, distributed architecture with WebRTC and web communication from over eight years. I'm uh, also a Linux and open source enthusiast, and I'm particularly expert and involved in Node.js language. And uh, we, because which uh, I've been using it to develop some core services for both uh, server and client web application uh, to serve uh, some uh, hundreds of codes at the same time. I work something about uh, the company where I work, okay? I work um, in a company that is called the Netesis, situated in the center of Italy. And it's a great Italian game changer, which operates in the open source field since 2003. Uh, Netesis is a very innovative and open company, embracing many different bleeding edge technologies every day, uh, such as uh, Node.js and WebRTC, of course, uh, to, um, that have been used uh, since um, their births to make uh, some unified communication products that is in production now. We at Netesis also developed a NetServer Linux distribution based on CentOS that is obviously completely open source and available on GitHub. And uh, we provide uh, remote support for all kinds of uh, our products, okay? But uh, our field is the open source. I also spoke at some international conferences and uh, such as Astricon, NetCloudConf, uh, uh, the FOSDEM last month in Brussels, and uh, that's it, because uh, I love all kinds of technologies. So uh, today um, we are going to speak uh, something about WebRTC, okay? And uh, we at Netesis have developed a switchboard telephone system called the NetVoice, that is our enterprise product, that is based on um, Asterisk and FreePBX projects. And uh, in 2010, at about 2010, 2011, we have started to develop the NetCTI on top of it. That is a web application which brings to the end user all the switchboard functionalities through a web application. So uh, at uh, the start of 2011, we immediately embraced a new bleeding edge technologies that appeared that, that it was uh, WebRTC. And WebRTC, has opened a huge scenarios for all kinds of developers to make uh, some new kind of uh, methodologies in communication, I think. So, um, as we can see from the picture, our stack is uh, based on a server Linux distribution. Then there are Asterisk and FreePBX, and on top of it, there is the NetVoice, that is our switchboard system. And the upper layer is composed by the NetCTI, that is the web application with a particular software that is a soft phone WebRTC, a SIP soft phone, uh, directly integrated into the web browser to make audio and video calls. So uh, thanks to it, we can offer to our customers the possibility, the chance to make the calls from the browser without use any, any external physical phones or without the need to install any plugins. So you can decrease all the costs related to physical, to physical devices. So, um, for example, just to give you an example, one of our customers has about uh, 1,000 of uh, physical phones, okay? And uh, considering that uh, a medium price for a, for a video phone is about, uh, I think, $150, you can you you can understand that you can save a lot of money at about uh, one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay, to have uh, the same feature, the audio video calls. Okay, Be, also because our application has uh, many different so services. How did you no, no. how did you accomplish all this? You 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 basically wove together a whole bunch of different open source projects and you know put it on a distro, huh? Yeah, uh, our distro is, uh, uh, you can think, uh, as the base of uh, our different products because we integrate many different open source projects on it. And then we distribute uh, them through some different repositories, uh, some for uh, to distribute uh, some testing packages 
and other for automatic updates because for the deploy we can, we we are using the YAM technologies provided by the central system, the Red Hat systems. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, for example, we integrate also the famous open source project uh, called the uh, Nest Cloud for uh, data sharing. That now it's uh, very famous. Okay, so if you want, I'm going to share my experience, okay, in, on how to develop a SIP for WebRTC for all kind of developers. But uh, let me introduce briefly WebRTC. Okay, WebRTC enables the users to have a real-time communication between browsers. And uh, it's not a single technology, but it's a set of different technologies. And it's composed by three fundamental APIs. Uh, as you can see from the slide, they are get user media, RTC peer connection, and RTC data channel, three fundamental APIs. But of course, there are also other kinds of uh, APIs, uh, such as, for example, to have the statistic and record the media streaming. The first is used to access your media devices, and then you can use a TCP connection um, for other operations, such as uh, the, 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 um, the decoding and coding and RTC data channel to, to do uh, the transmission. Uh, WebRTC uses different kind of protocols. They are obviously real time. So some protocols are used for the transport and others for the signaling. And in particular, uh, speaking about the signals, uh, we need some signals to conquer to, to, uh, to negotiate and establish a connection and agreement between the involved parties. And then, uh, so uh, you can use different kinds of protocols for the signaling, but the most used one is the SIP. And you can use uh, different kind of transport for the SIP and the most used one is the web socket. Okay, we, we, are, um, we have also the security uh, using the secure version of the protocol and um, other protocols such as SDP to describe the session and other set of protocols, for example, stun, turn and dice that is used, that are used to overcome network problems, for example, related to NAT traversal. So STARN to have, is used to have your public IP address outside your local area network. TURN is used uh, uh, in other cases uh, for uh, different network scenarios uh, to relay all the media traffic. So uh, it requires a lot of bandwidth. OK, uh, let's take a look at this picture because this is the overall architecture of uh, the system. OK, looking. Uh, Looking at it, we can see that uh, there are many components that interact between them. But uh, we are interested uh, uh, previous, um, we are interested in web application and uh, the server PBX, okay? Because we want to make the SIP phone into the web application, okay? In our case, the server PBX is called NetVoice. That is our enterprise uh, product. But uh, also an open source version exists that is completely open source and available on GitHub. I, I uh, will show also some interesting link uh, in, the late, in the last slide. And in the next step, we will see also how to easily run your own private PBX at your home, because I would like to show how to have a development environment to start playing with WebRTC for all the attendees, okay? The PBX uh, then is uh, connected, externally connected to some point provider through the internet and to the PSTN network to, to, com to communicate with all kinds of devices. So, uh, as I already said, at Netesis, we developed a full switchboard system and a web application with the integrated SIP from WebRTC. And to make it during the years, we have made two different implementations that are currently used in production on some thousands of customers. And uh, the first implementation was made using uh, the JavaScript library called the CPML5. And then, uh, and then uh, we, we have made a second implementation uh, using the Janus gateway, okay? So now we are going to see the first one seeing the steps to implement it, okay? So 
it should be interesting for all web developers because uh, it's uh, it's very easy. CPML5 has been the first implementation of an HTML5 SIP client. It was a bleeding edge technology. So as the word suggests, uh, it implied uh, great advancement, but at the same time, uh, you can have also some problems because related to increased risk because of availability of the software, of course, as uh, all technology at, um, at the starting point. It was presented at about in 2012 at Google I.O. And uh, we, has re uh, we have used right away uh, something has gone right and something not, but uh, we have a good time. Maybe. So its main characteristic is that it's 100% uh, full JavaScript. It doesn't, it doesn't require any plugin. You don't have to need uh, to install any plugin. Uh, it uses SIP over WebSocket for the signaling, and uh, the media stack obviously is based on WebRTC. And uh, you can uh, make a different kind of application, not only over the video calls, but also, for example, screen sharing and uh, instant messaging. And it supports also both, both uh, desktop and mobile platform. So you can make all the video calls also from your browser into your mobile device. It works very so, well. So with this configuration, you, 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 need, you, need a, uh, you need a server for it, right? Uh, our, yes, you, you need uh, some configuration for it. Okay, mm -hmm. and um, there are. So it's not, two... it's not using the native Astro because one of one of the big things at AstroCon is they're starting to build uh, yeah. WebSocket server asterisk, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in our product, products. in our product, we we are using uh, uh, asterisk project, of course, and we have made uh, many different configuration for it to make it work very well. So our enterprise version, as uh, we will see in the next slide, have uh, many different uh, features uh, compared to the open source one. But uh, you can uh, download the open source version that is called NetServer Void PBX. There is a huge documentation on it. You can experiment in whatever manner you want. and. Uh, as, uh, as we will see in this presentation, I have uh, already prepared a Vagrant VirtualBox machine, a VirtualBox machine for the Vagrant. So uh, you can uh, experiment, you can easily experiment with it, uh, downloading it and uh, executing using Vagrant. Okay, so the configuration uh, um, is, uh, is needed for, uh, for the extension, for the queues, uh, for the dial plan and many many different components, okay? And also, obviously, for the CPML5, because compared to the second implementation, CPML5, as, uh, we, as we can see from this slide, from this architecture, CPML5 client uh, communicates directly with Asterisk PBX, okay? So it uses uh, the WebSocket communication and speak directly with uh, Asterisk PBX. This is the difference with the second implementation, as we will see. So in this case, uh, the HTML5 client uh, has a SIP and HTTP stack. SIP uh, is the signaling and um, using WebSocket, and the HTTP is used to describe the session. And then once the session has been established, uh, WebRTC is used to transmit the media traffic. Okay, and then the server PBX can be connected to some external networks such as the PSTN network, network to, to communicate with all kinds of external devices. Now we are going to see um, how it's easy to implement the cloud phone with sign line of code because uh, the, we have only to initialize the engine calling the init method of the global JavaScript object that is called CPML. Okay, then it's, uh, it, it is uh, necessary to start the SIP stack. Then we can register the extension using the new session API. And then, um, and finally, as the last step, we can make a new call. Uh, that's it.
it takes very little time. And uh, more in detail, uh, we can see uh, the inclusion of the library, of course, because it requires only one file. Then we start, we initialize the engine, calling the init method and passing to it two callbacks as parameters, one for the success and one for the failure. And then uh, we, we, we require, the, this step requires, the initialization of the stack requires uh, this data, the server address, okay, of the PBX that uh, can be on premise, on uh, or into the cloud, nothing changed. Then uh, we specify the CPU array that is composed by the protocol, the extension identifier, and the server address. The password. Um, I suggest to take it uh, seriously into account because uh, today it's uh, it's not uh, it's it's very common uh, to stumbling into some scripts. Uh, if um, if the CPO ports are opened to the internet, and these scripts try to register some extension with some simple password and make a uh, call to payment number, so it's very it's very important to choose a password. Okay, the display name uh, display shown on the display of the phone, and then we can specify the WebSocket URL, and uh, it is composed by the WebSocket Secure Protocol. All traffic is encrypted, and uh, take um, take a moment to observe that uh, we have to specify a particular port 889. So also this port uh, have to be uh, have to be reachable from the client, and that's the uh, we can um, uh, we attach some event listeners, and then we can start uh, the SIP stack. At this point. We can register the extension, calling the new session API on the ready, on the just created SIP stack, passing to it the word register and the some event listener. And at this point, if we, we have correctly configured the backend TVX, we have registered the extension and we can originate new phone codes. In this manner, we create a call session, invoking again the new session API on the SIP stack and passing to it some parameters to receive audio video stream. Uh, the parameters are some references to HTML elements, so also in this case, all using web standard. It's very important. And then uh, we attach uh, other event listeners and, call, and make a, an originate a new call using the call function. Okay, so uh, we have seen the implementation of a cloud phone using CPML5. That was our first implementation. And now we are going to see the second solution we have made using Janus Gateway. What is it, Janus? Janus is a general purpose gateway made by the Mythico company. And uh, more, more in depth, it's a WebRTC gateway. That, as I already said, the difference with CPML5 is that previously the CPML5 communicate, communicated directly with Asterisk, but now the client communicates with a Janus Gateway component that is on the server into the server, which in turn communicates directly with Asterisk. Okay. Janus uh, use uh, JSON standard format for the messages exchange, and this architecture is made by plugin. Uh, in our case, we have used only the C plugin because, uh, of course, we we have made only audio video calls. But you can use, for example, a screen sharing plugin. Okay, uh, it provides also some monitoring features and uh, some different interfaces. And this is the architecture used with Janus, and uh, as you can see, the HTML5 client, client communicates with Janus Gateway through an Apache proxy pass. So this traffic uh, is encrypted using the standard HTTPS, and only the standard HTTPS port have to be reachable by the client. And Janus component communicates with Asterisk PBX. So uh, how to use Janus? As uh, just something to note, you can find all the explained code on GitHub and also how to run a PBX server with only two commands. So you can immediately start to play with it. And uh, in this case, we 
only four steps are needed. The first is the engine initialization, and in this case, the global object is called the Janus. And then we, um, we create a new session. We attach the, a, plug a plugin, a plugin uh, and in this case, we have attached only the C plugin. And uh, at the end, we can create a new audio video call. And uh, let's go deeper to see more details. The inclusion of the library, uh, we need only two libraries. Obviously, one is Janus, and another one is an adapter that resolves all the WebRTC changes between different browsers. Then we initialize the engine, uh, calling the init method of Janus global object, and passing to it uh, a callback. Then we create a new session specifying the server address, and in this case, uh, no uh, custom port is needed, only the 443 of HTTPS. And we pass to it some different uh, callbacks to manage different events. At this point, once the initialization is completed, we can attach the C plugin using the relative API and adding various callback functions. In this slide, the code has been delivered as a cutoff to concentrate only on the parameters and uh, to be passed, and of course, to not complicate the reading of the code. At the end, uh, to create an ODB call, we can invoke the Create Offer API on the SIP plugin handler that we obtained in the previous step. And uh, if the Create Offer has been successful, then we specify the destination of the call. That's it. And uh, at this point, um, let's let's look a little deeper at the backend because uh, it's uh, another very important component to make the calls. Of course, for the, uh, for this presentation, I've used the NetServer Void PBX that is based on Asterisk uh, Free PBX projects and the server Linux distribution. It's completely open source, as I already said, and you can find it on GitHub. The server also has a huge community of enthusiastic people, and you can find it on community.netserver.org, and you can participate in, in the project, of course. Then the enterprise version is called NetVoice, and on top of it, there is the NetCTI web application with the WebRTC phone. If we have time, I will show you also a video of the, pro of the product. To give you an environment to test all of these uh, things, I've created a virtual box machine that you can easily run with Vagrant. All is on GitHub, and I give you the link in the last slide. OK, so as I already said, that, um, for this purpose, I've created a virtual box machine. Uh, that is present at uh, this uh, URL. And uh, as you can see from this picture, um, the VirtualBox machine already contains six different extensions already configured and uh, with a default password. Obviously, uh, you can play with, uh, with it, uh, changing any kind of configuration. For example, pass the password of the extension and uh, you can enjoy it in whatever manner you want. So to recap, um, we, we only need to clone the GitHub repository only to have the Vagrant file on your local file system and then execute Vagrant tab. So if, uh, if all went uh, well, at this point, you have your server PBX ready to use and you also uh, can hatch us to FreePBX web interface to customize whatever whatever thing you want. And uh, now in the next slide, we will show uh, we will uh, see how to experiment with WebRTC. Okay, this slide uh, regard codex it's not very important now. Probably we come back uh, later. And uh, now I would like to show you an open source demo. Okay, present that I developed and present on GitHub. It's uh, obviously open source, and I developed it uh, from the uh, enterprise version of the CTI application. Okay, so to recap, we are going, uh, we need uh, only two steps. Um, 
first of all, you, uh, we clone the repository, skip into it, run Vagrant app. Uh, so at this point, we have uh, uh, our server PBX, and then uh, we we are going to open the show at the show URL that contains the client demo, and then um, I will uh, insert some default values that you can find on GitHub, and finally we can experiment with the client phone. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the experiment, okay? Um, this is uh, the open source demo present on, uh, uh, it's available on GitHub. I already uh, prepared a VirtualBox machine on my local machine, of course. I, uh, I executed it uh, via Vagrant and uh, and uh, okay, just it. I I'm going to insert some default values. One is the server address, and this is the IP address of uh, my local machine. Okay, the display name to be shown on the phone. In this case, I'm using Qcom. The extension identifier and uh, 200 is one of uh, uh, six different extensions already configured in the in the machine and then i'm going to insert the default password so at this point i can click the login and uh, all is went well so at this point uh, i have uh, registered the extension 200 in the server pbx I don't know if you can say, but uh, behind me, I, I prepared a physical phone uh, behind me. So I'm going to make a new audio video call uh, from the extension 200 that I've just uh, registered in the server PBX to the extension 201 that is my physical phone behind me. So I insert I'm going to insert the destination and click audio video call. Okay, the call is ringing and uh, I'm answered to it. Okay, the experiment went well. I'm lucky. Okay, so as you can see, um, there is uh, the remote and local video, and all went well. Okay, I got the call now. Okay, I come back to, to the slide to show only some, uh, some other slide, okay? Can you hear me, Michael? Yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, something about the technical choices, okay? Because uh, why we have uh, switched between uh, CPML5 and Janus? Uh, first of all, uh, in 2011, CPML5 was the, the only first implementation of a CPML uh, of, a, um, of a soft phone, okay, based on WebRTC, of course. And uh, it, it is open source and uh, there, are, there is a great support on Google Groups and so on. But uh, as usual, when you use bleeding edge technologies, your code could suddenly break due to the evolution of the standard and also when the browser updates. So for example, a customer uh, can call you can cause you to say that he can no longer make phone calls. So you have to immediately fix the problem uh, and deploy the code to everyone immediately. And because the continuous adoption of the code is very, very expensive in terms of money and time, we have decided to switch the project adopting uh, the Janus, Janus Gateway. Because Janus is uh, made by Mythico that offers a technical support of high level uh, that answers just in short time. 
So if you get yourself in a jam, they can help you. And uh, well, Janus, Janus was, as a whole is, yeah, as a whole is it, much more performant than a pure JavaScript library too, right? Yeah, 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 of course. It is composed by a JavaScript library on the client and a component that uh, is on the server. That uh, uh, That is the, the good part of Janus because uh, it's independent from the specific browser and they manage all the changing that can arise from the specification and uh, from the browser update. And uh, very important is also the monitoring features because um, I would like to emphasize the monitoring uh, because it's very, very important for me because when you are in production, um, you, you don't, and you don't have any problem, all is good, but as soon as something goes wrong, you will be scratching your head. So to, to help you with the bugging, you have different options with Janus. For example, the admin API, and uh, not only for debugging, because it's also po uh, possible to catch some source of attack. And uh, nowadays, there is an escalation number for this kind of uh, problems, for this kind of attacks. So now, if I, if I, if I can, I would like to, to show you uh, this picture that uh, has been taken from the NetCTI web application, okay? And this is just uh, to, to, to show that uh, you can um, completely abandon the physical phone and you can make new innovative product with WebRTC, uh, also in production, because this kind of uh, product is uh, on some thousands of customers. And uh, briefly, uh, this application is composed by two components, mm, uh, one on the server and one on the client, and this, uh, and this has been made 100% in Node.js. The server is completely written uh, in this manner and uh, is made up of several independent and isolated components. As for example, the, um, the, the component that make a proxy with asterisk, and uh, another one that manages the REST API communication, and another one to have some statistic. There are many components. So you have the ability also to extend uh, the features, such as uh, to have this TCP communication or to integrate different PBX, for example, also the free switch platform. And, um, and in this manner, if some new version going to be released, you have to adapt only the single action of a subcomponent. And uh, it uses the latest version of Node.js to have always, always have the best performance. And uh, another great advantage of this architecture is that you can develop whatever new innovative application you want that interacts with the same server and also into the cloud. And you can integrate it with any ERP already existing in your company. And um, I would like it to. I would like that this project will become completely open source, and I hope to release at least the Asterisk proxy component as soon as possible, and then to integrate also why not uh, other other various PBX, uh, free free switch platform, Camellia, and so on. Okay, and uh, also because this application remain API based because. Uh, it offers an abstraction layer of API to remain independent from the specific server PBX. And uh, okay, this slide, I wrote this slide only to, to give you some references to all attendees. The first link is uh, my, to my GitHub account. The repository is Clucon Weekly 2019, where you can, uh, where all attendees can find all the relevant links of this presentation. And the second one is a, is a blog that is uh, really very interesting for me. It's made uh, by Taki Levent Levy, uh, that uh, if I'm not wrong, will be here at Glucon Weekly next week. And this blog uh, contains a lot of interesting articles about WebRTC. So it's very, very interesting. So uh, that's it. I would like to say also that uh, if you want to contact me, if uh, all attendees want to contact me to discuss uh, something, I will be very happy to talk with anyone who is interested in WebRTC, but not only, also for some questions 
about the server PBX, JavaScript, Node.js, and whatever topic that the audience want. So now, Michael, that's all. And uh, thank you very much to you and uh, to all attendees for having listened to this talk. Thank you very much. So let me ask you some questions. What, what challenges did you have up to date? Um, with yeah, the yeah, of course. So what, what were some of the challenges that you had? Okay, to today we have uh, many different uh, future developments in uh, our roadmap. For example, the most... Ah, okay, the challenges, uh, the problems, right? Mm -hmm. Well, and, you could, and you, uh, you could tell us about the roadmap too. Okay. Ah, yeah, yeah, sorry, but uh, I had some problems with the audio, but uh, now it's okay. Um, in the past, uh, the main problems uh, was uh, the WebRTC update, WebRTC technology update, of course, because uh, also today it's uh, not a standard, okay? 2019 will be uh, probably the year in what the WebRTC probably will become a standard, but uh, it's uh, not uh, very sure. And uh, so we, we, can, we can have uh, many different adaptions of the code in this year. And uh, so in the past, uh, we have to adapt our code when uh, uh, browser updates, because uh, uh, the browser developers uh, adapt, uh, adapted your their code to the new standard that evolved. And uh, so this is the main problem. And uh, in our roadmap, for example, um, there is many, many features, such as the next feature that I want to be implemented is the desktop sharing, uh, all, always uh, made using Janus, because Janus is uh, made by plugin, as I already said, so um, it uh, has also the plugin for desktop sh the, for screen sharing. So this is, and uh, also some other features such as uh, document sharing, uh, video conferencing. We have to decide uh, now if uh, it will be integrated into the NetCDI application or will be a standalone product. And uh, I think that uh, in this field, uh, there are many, many, uh, new, um, very interesting uh, topics uh, to be to be implemented. So, have I, I noticed you used Adapter with Janus? But did you try using Adapter with uh, SIPML five and or, or like um, no, uh, not, uh, no, I didn't. In the past, we have used only SIPML five library. Uh, I think that uh, it. Uh, it had uh, implemented on it something uh, about this adapter, but uh, I'm not very sure about that. Mm. Obviously, with CPML5, uh, we had uh, uh, more problems than now, because now uh, all these kind of problems is managed by the Janus Gateway component on the server. So tell me, tell me about yourself. How long have you been doing this? <laughs> In this project, I started this project at about uh, eight years ago, in uh, around 2011. And at the start, uh, uh, we at Netasys have developed, uh, started to develop uh, the NetCTI application, of course, but at the start, uh, the first component that uh, was made was the Asterisk proxy. Now it's uh, very, very stable because uh, we, we are using um, a different component on the server that is uh, independent from each other. 
So for example, if a new version of Asterisk will be released and uh, some actions uh, has been changed, this is because we are using the MEI interface of Asterisk. So if uh, some actions has been changed, we have to adapt only the specific line of code that manage this action. And uh, all the upper layer remain independent from that because uh, we offer uh, an abstraction layer to, to, the, uh, to the client. So for example, the client uh, doesn't manage the specific channel of Asterisk PBX, but uh, it uh, manages the an abstraction of a conversation with an ID. So for example, if you want to end up a conversation, you call you you call the REST API and gap passing to it the ID of the conversation. That's it. It's very simple. And and nice also you uh, you 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 can develop whatever application you want using this uh, this kind of REST API. And uh, also because and uh, you you can also have uh, all kind of uh, real time events because also WebSocket communication is used to have uh, all the events from the server PBX to the client. Well, Asterisk has its, it, it, its own WebSocket server, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, Asterisk has uh, a WebSocket connection. So in the past uh, with CPML5, uh, we have used it, uh, connecting the client direct, uh, directly with uh, Asterisk. But uh, we, you have to open another port and to manage it. Uh, now, instead, uh, ah, and uh, you can have also some problems with that because uh, if you don't have a, cert a certificate, uh, you in your browser, you have to accept a self signed certificate on this particular port and then uh, you come back to the site to use it. So now, it's havoc with the browsers. <laughs> yeah. And now, uh, using Genos, uh, it uses uh, uh, only the HTTPS port, so the traffic is proxy passed by the Apache proxy, Apache Apache web server. So you don't uh, you don't have uh, this problem anymore. It's uh, more more comfortable. Also, particularly for our customers. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for coming in today. Thank you very much uh, to you and uh, all attendees and all of you. You, you, have, a, you have a beautiful GUI. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> and it, and it's thank a cool you. Project. Yeah, yeah, of course. Back to you, Ken. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. All right, Michael, Alessandro, thank you guys very much for coming in today. Uh, Alessandro, a really cool project. Uh, you guys go check it out. Thank you. Uh, and uh, we'll get we'll see if we can't get some of those links in the show notes down below. So uh, thank you guys very much for coming out to uh, ClueCon Weekly today. Uh, be sure you uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, click that little notify button uh, next to the subscribe button. Once you do that, you'll get the alerts when we go live next time. We've got lots of cool guests coming up. Uh, Madison has been staying really busy keeping the schedule full. Uh, so you watch for the alerts for that. Also, uh, so we'll be back here next week. You guys have a great, great week. You've been watching Klucon Weekly. Tune in every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central. Keep up with the latest happenings by subscribing to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, or visit us at freeswitch.com.